Hey everyone, Samsung has launched the Galaxy Note 10 and Note 10 Plus. In this review, we're gonna be focusing on the Note 10 Plus version of the phone and not the vanilla Note because it has more features and it's a bigger jump from the Galaxy S10 Plus. Now, this is one of the shiniest and prettiest phones that we've seen recently, but does that mean that it's premium enough for its high price tag? I'm Angie for GSM Marina, and this is a review of the Note 10 Plus. Wait, 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 okay. So, uh, <clears throat> I wanted to take a moment and uh, bring your attention to the fact that we just hit 800,000 subscribers. And I wanted to thank all of you guys for your support and for your appreciation of our work. So, with that said, uh, let's get back to the Note 10 Plus. The design is gorgeous. This beast of a phone is practically bezel-free, it has a tiny hole punch, and the Aura Glow color is the definition of eye-catching. It actually reminds me of the back of a CD, or like Matthew Monas said, a disco ball. In terms of ergonomics, it's also much comfier to hold than last year's Note 9, despite the size. This is probably because the aluminum frame is thinner. Also, the phone is balanced quite nicely, so it feels much lighter than it actually is. The curve of the sides is also much more subtle than last year, which adds to the elegant effect. The power button has been moved to the left, where the Bixby key used to be. One of our working theories is that Samsung didn't have a lot of space to put the button in a comfortable spot on the right, since that's where the bulk of the electronics for the S Pen are. Still, the move isn't much of a loss, because that Bixby key has been hanging around for three generations now, and nobody really liked it very much. And now you can remap the power button, so you can choose whether you want Bixby, the camera app, or something else. Yeah, taking screenshots is a little more awkward, but you can also turn on the palm swipe shortcut. The fingerprint reader is noticeably faster than on the S10, but it's still slowed down by the unlocking animation. You can actually make it quicker by switching on faster recognition, which is slightly less secure than a regular fingerprint scan. Or if you don't care about crazy good security, there's also a face unlock option. On the top, you'll find the card slot, which still supports external storage on the Note 10 Plus. What is missing on this device and its little brother is the headphone jack. I'm honestly a little surprised that they did it first on the Note line and not on the Galaxy S phones, because the Note is typically associated with having every important feature out there and the S Pen. If you can afford this phone, you can probably afford a nice pair of Bluetooth headphones or Samsung's Galaxy Buds, but I'm still wary of the whole Bluetooth headphone thing. I've learned to live with the annoyance that is charging them and the occasional dysfunctional Bluetooth connection on even the best of phones, but in general, those super expensive headphones <coughs> Sony, have mediocre microphones and I'm constantly forced to turn them off and use the phone normally, like a pleb. So yeah, it's official, the jack is dead. But can the headphone industry catch up already? Until it does, you can buy a Samsung dongle because there isn't one included in the box. Still, if that's the main way you listen to music, you'll be happy to know that the wired audio quality is excellent. And surprisingly, there's still FM radio. Also, whether you're dealing with Bluetooth cans or the dongle life, the adapt sound option is still available so you can add a personalized sound profile depending on how good your hearing is. While we're on the topic of audio, the stereo loudspeaker setup is surprisingly loud and well-balanced, especially once you consider how incredibly tiny that earpiece is. Midtones and highs are nice, but lows could be a little more powerful. Still, it's one of the best you'll find on a phone. Another feature that's one of the best you'll find is that gorgeous 6.8-inch dynamic AMOLED screen. It's a QHD display that supports HDR10+, and has excellent colors. The vivid mode can be a bit bluish, but the natural mode makes it incredibly accurate. Brightness can get up to a nice 381 nits in manual mode and a whopping 794 in auto mode, so sunlight legibility should not be an issue. The hole punch also isn't much of a problem. Since it's pretty small in comparison to the size of the display, you hardly notice it even when you're watching videos. If it really bothers you, there's no way to hide it, but this is an AMOLED display, so anytime there's something darker on the screen, it'll simply blend in. Depending on where you live, you'll get a Note 10 Plus that's powered either by the Snapdragon 855 Plus or the Exynos 9825. We tested the Exynos version of the phone and established that while it has slightly higher clock speeds on some of the cores, performance is not substantially different from that of the Galaxy S10 Plus. Battery life, however, is much better. 
With a massive 4,300 mAh battery, the Note 10 Plus got 107 hours of endurance on our tests, and you could probably even bump this up by going into settings and changing the power consumption options. Charging is also improved, and the phone supports charging up to 45 watts if you shell out some extra cash for Samsung's fast charger. If you don't want to give up the extra money and just use the standard cable in the box, then you'll get 25 watt charging. The phone supports Android Pie with One UI on top. While the software is packed full of options, it doesn't feel as heavy as that of previous generations. It also makes this behemoth a little easier to navigate than the Note 9 from last year, but it's still far from a one-handed device. Gestures in particular make this phone much easier to navigate, and we really recommend you use them instead of navigation buttons. However, even if you choose not to, you can swipe down in almost every menu, and what's on screen will drop down to the bottom half of the display for easier reaching. In general, if you've used any recent Samsung phone, everything will be pretty familiar. There's still edge lighting for notifications, and they've brought a tap to wake function so you can activate the always on display. The S Pen also includes new gestures for the camera, but they're still a bit gimmicky. Taking a photo from far away is super useful, but now you also have the option of air gestures, which allow you to switch from one camera mode to another. Really, I can't think of many situations where just walking over and switching the camera mode isn't easier. You can also use the combined powers of the Time of Flight camera and the S Pen to create AR doodles. The Time of Flight sensor doesn't just aid with AR, however. TUF cameras use infrared lights to determine depth distance, and that's the reason why, even though the triple camera setup is pretty much the same as the one that you'll find on the Galaxy S10, the Note 10 Plus has way better portraits. Actually, I think it's time we talk about the cameras. They can make or break a flagship, especially one as premium and expensive as this one. The main 12 megapixel camera has a variable aperture, and is pretty much the same hardware that we've been seeing on Galaxy phones since the S9. However, since the chipsets and image signal processors have gotten better, the photos and videos we're seeing have also gotten better. The main cam produces shots with low noise, good detail, and punchy colors during the day. We compared them to photos produced by the Exynos version of the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus and the OnePlus 7 Pro. The Note 10 tends to use a lower exposure than the S10, better HDR, but slightly softer images at times. The OnePlus 7 Pro, on the other hand, has slightly less amazing HDR, but more detail, sometimes significantly so. On the telephoto camera, there's less detail than on the main cam, but the processing is very similar, so we see the pattern repeat. The dynamic range is still good, and HDR is once again better than the equivalent on the S10. The Note 10's telephoto also has a slightly wider aperture, which means less shaky photos. As far as the ultrawide is concerned, the Note 10 Plus has one of the widest fields of view on a phone, but very little distortion despite that. Once again, HDR is better on the Note than on the S10. At night, however, the results surprised us. Low light photos are great, with generally nice detail and good colors. If you switch on night mode, the already good dynamic range is further improved. However, this mode isn't necessarily better than the regular photo mode, so whether it's worth using or not depends on the scene you're taking a shot of. When we compared the Note 10 to the S10, we didn't find any significant differences, but when we compared it to the OnePlus 7 Pro, well, the OnePlus tended to capture better photos at night even without night mode. The OnePlus had more detail, was sharper, and dealt better with light sources. The Note had better dynamic range, but images were significantly softer. Despite the smaller sensor, the ultrawide camera produces good images, even without night mode. In fact, night mode only helps for improving the dynamic range at the cost of some softness. Where the Note 10 really shines is edge detection. You can treat portraits with both the telephoto and main camera, and the 3D TOF sensor allows for excellent portraits on even difficult subjects. I mean, look at the hair here. The TOF also allows for live focus in videos, but the blur effect there is much less successful than what you get with stills. The color point and glitch effects seem to work a bit better, and would be pretty effective for something like Instagram stories. Other than that, the Note 10 Plus excels in video recording, and it even supports HDR10 Plus recording. In 4K, there's plenty of detail, excellent dynamic range, and punchy colors. You can use all three cameras when you're shooting in 4K, and you can choose whether you want to shoot in 30 or 60 frames per second. Full HD video keeps the same characteristics, albeit in a lower resolution, and allows for super steady stabilization. 
Last but not least, the selfie camera. It's the same one as in the previous generation, although with a slightly smaller opening because Samsung wanted to make the punch hole less obtrusive. Selfies have impressive dynamic range, and the autofocus means they're pretty much always in focus. The Note 10 Plus is one of the most premium phones you can buy at the moment. But should you get it? Well, it depends on your priorities. If the S Pen is not important to you, then honestly, you're gonna get a really similar user experience with the OnePlus 7 Pro or the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, which are way cheaper than this phone. If the S Pen is important to you, then the verdict is pretty clear and you're really gonna like this device. It's shiny and pretty and powerful and it has pretty much every feature you could want in a phone. Well, you know, almost. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button down below, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and I'll see you guys next time.